Hello there. In this video, we are going to study the potential divider. Okay, so all this, if you really understand the ideas that we have covered previously, this is just a little bit of an extension to show you how to apply the idea of sharing and dividing potential. But let's look at the circuit that I've built here. On one side, I have a battery, 9 volts, okay? And then here, I have a good old lamp with a resistance of 10 ohm. And I have this uh, resistor, which resistors I can change. Maybe I'll put it at 10 ohm as well. Okay. So what happens when I close the switch? Okay. The idea of uh, EMF, which is from the battery, 9 volt, is that it would provide energy for the electrons to flow. So the electrons are going to flow in the circuit when I close the switch. Uh, some of the energy will be lost in the light bulb. Some of it will be lost in the resistor. Let's see. Let me close the switch. And now you can see, well, the electron will flow through the filament, the filament will get hot and then it will glow. And if I measure the potential difference across this, I'll get 4.5. And if I measure across this, because the resistance is the same, so the potential is shared equally 4.5. Now, the cool thing about potential divider is that I can change the light intensity by changing the value of resistance. Now, your house, or oh, let's say you've got Google Home or Siri or whatever AI you have in your house, or maybe you have those manual ones. You go there and you tell, hey, I want to dim the light because I want to create an ambience. I want to relax. I want to chill. So when you dim the light, what you are doing is you're making the light less bright. So what I could do to dim the light is to, instead of giving the light 4.5 volt, I give the light less potential. To give the light less potential, what I'll do is I'll increase this resistance. So maybe I'll stretch it a bit to 13. You can see the intensity is decreasing. Ah, now the light is very dim. You can read your book. Let's say early in the morning you wake up and you want a bright light, okay? So when you want the lights to be bright, what I'll do is I will decrease the resistance and you can see this one actually becomes brighter. Okay. Let's say I drop this down to 3 ohms. Okay. And you will see that this is 2 volts, 2.1. And if you measure here, this is 6.97. So if I were to keep uh, all the voltmeters here just to measure the potential, I want you to look at the voltmeter readings. Okay, so right now, I will adjust the resistance. First, I increase it. The light is less dim. This potential will increase potential across the resistor. Potential across the light bulb will decrease. So this one is less bright. So remember, all these numbers just tell you energy conversion. If you want the light to be less bright, you give it less energy. So then I will transfer that energy to the resistor that is placed in series. If I want it to be brighter, I will tell this resistor, decrease your resistance. So this one will take a less portion. This one will take a larger portion. Okay. And the sharing of this is by ratio. So let us look, go look at our notes and try to figure out how to write out the ratio and also understand what exactly is potential dividers. Dividing the potential across two circuit components that are in series. See, lamp and resistor. And we are back. So in this part, Again, the potential divider is to divide potential across resistors in series. So for this example, I will have a battery here. And uh, maybe I will put this as plus E. This is the EMF because I'm just going to use a general uh, setup here. Okay, this is E. And right now, I will connect this in series with a bunch of resistors. Let's call this R1 somewhere down here. This is R2, and somewhere down here, this is R3. So if you think about this uh, circuit, right, currently what is going on is um, your current will flow. There's only one loop. And the potential difference across this whole thing um, will be the same as E. Because if you think about this, okay, maybe I should put numbers. I'll let this one be 12 volt. Okay. So every part along this red color wire is going to be plus 12, plus 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. So every point here is going to be 12 volt, 12 volt. Okay. So this one will drop. Let's say it drops by V1. Okay. And then by the time you reach here, 
this will be 12 minus V1 because you minus ma, right? And then here to here, you drop by V2. And finally, here to here, you drop by V3. Say you install a voltmeter. The voltmeter here will actually measure V3. The voltmeter here will measure V2. And the voltmeter here will measure V1. Because we are measuring differences. Okay. So bef if you are if you need numbers to help you, okay, because by the time we reach down here, this will be zero volt. You can refer to the examples that we will record or is that's inside the playlist. But uh, the whole idea about this potential drive is that number one, the value of V is proportional to the resistance. Okay? Because they all have the same current. It is the same loop. So they all have the same current. Whatever current that flows through R1 will flow through R2, will flow through R3, and then go back. So same current. That's why V is proportional to R. And because of this, we can use ratio to actually find the value of V1, V2, or V3. The second thing to take note about is the E, because of conservation energy, is actually equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. So to help you visualize this, here is a drawing, okay? You can see the battery here, this battery. This battery drives up the energy or the potential difference, okay? And then, um, so this is the part that I'm highlighting, okay? Drives it up. And then after that, what happens is when the current flows through the first resistor, R1, it loses energy, converts to heat loss. This R1 can also be a lamp. Then that will be con converted to heat and light. Then the energy level will drop. Okay? Flow through R2. Behind my head, flow through R2. The energy level will drop some more. And then flow through R3. Okay, let's change color now. R3. Energy level drops some more. But the total drop in energy level means that you go back to zero. See? Go back to ground flow before the battery pumps you up again, before this battery pumps you up again. So the whole idea of a uh, potential divider is that, and also your Kirchhoff second law, is that when you have a closed loop, the potential is shared across every single component in proportion to its resistance. The bigger the resistance, the bigger the drop. So if we go back here, potential in proportion to resistance, and this one is your Kirchhoff second law, we can write out two types of ratio, okay? So the first type, I would call this the ratio between resistors. Uh, which one to write really depends on which one you're comfortable with and which, one, which information you have, okay? So for example, I can say that V1 over R1 is equal to V2 over R2, is equal to the potential difference across R3 or the potential drop of R3 uh, over the resistance of R3. And this will also be equal to the total V1 plus V2 plus V3 over the total resistance or the whole EMF, the battery power supply, over the total resistance. Okay, this is one way to write this. And the second type or the second style is that you can write ratio, ratio to total. Okay, so it's just a different way of writing this. I can say, uh, how should I say this? I can say something like R1 over the total resistance is equal to V1 over the total EMF. Okay. Now, personally, I prefer this because it forces me to check the units because I am a very, you know, sometimes I forget to change units or it forces me or it allows me to cancel off. Let's say if this is kilo ohm, this is kilo ohm. That lah, be easier lah. But this one also can let you cancel lah. Whichever works for you. You can take R1 over total resistance. It's a potential difference of 1 over E. In fact, if you look at this ratio, it's actually the same as this one equal to this one. We just rearranged it a bit.
So write it in whichever way makes sense to you. Okay, I do not micromanage the way you solve a question. So you can write like that. Or if let's say you want to look for V2, then I can say R2 over total resistance is equal to V2 over E. So we are just essentially sharing the potential difference in proportion to the resistor. All right. That's it for this theory video. So the main idea is number one, I can share out the potential difference in proportion to the resistor. Number two, the total drop must be equal to the EMF. If it helps you to visualize, you can think about this 3D graph. Wherever the battery supplies, it will be shared out across however many resistors you have, whether you have three or four or 10 or two. And it will be shared in proportion to the value of R. All right, I'll see you in the example videos. Take care now.